Hola, mis amores. Welcome to another episode of this dub series I'm doing called Lead with Ease. These conversations really are for, pardon me, honestly, I love to hear my clients talking about themselves and how amazing they're doing. I'm not even going for it. But they're also for you. <laughs> they are for you to take a look under the hood, behind the curtains, all the marketing terms you want about what it requires and what it takes to lead with ease, what it takes to grieve with joy, what it takes to let go and surrender, and what it takes to step into your power with that authenticity you know you have available to and can seem to tap into. So as you watch this conversation between me and the Dr. Jamila Brown, who's gonna introduce herself in a second, if you feel called to work with me, if you called, if you feel called to be a part of my community, there is a link above my face or in the comments if you're watching the replay. You know, you know what to do. You know the vibes, you know what time it is. If you know, you know, you know I don't really do this. You get it. You get it. Click on there, book a call with your girl. Let's talk. And let's see if that's the space for you. If you know, you know. If you don't, then you don't. It's really that simple. Jamila, hi. Hello. Oh, hi. Hello. Introduce yourself to the people. Tell us who you are. And I'm like, what's good? What's poppin'? Uh, Wapin, que sopa. I'm Jamila. <laughs> <laughs> had to get Panamanian real quick on them. Uh, but I'm Jamila. I have a consultancy, Jamila Aisha LLC. And I do communications work, but um, actually evolving more into a multimedia storyteller, which is a very exciting, aspiring cultural provocateur. Um, so my work is global. I like really focus on the African diaspora and uh, social justice issues, human rights issues that impact us. And I definitely believe that stories are liberatory and it comes from a very personal place. You know, being a black person from this Americas, like, Literally, my family is from every part of mm -hmm. the Americas. There's a very long tradition of storytelling that I grew up with and ways in which I learned about my culture uh, were through stories. Like my, you know, abuela was Jamaican with tell us go stories. So mm -hmm. I think stories are so powerful and help us to shape our reality. And I work with people to bring that to fruition so we can start telling new stories that actually free us. Imagine mm -hmm. that. Stories. Provocateur. It's the French <laughs> air for me. I know, right? That's my uh, trying to get my French back. So I'm like provocateur and all of those. Yeah, I heard, I heard them provocateur. Somebody <laughs> French person is about to fall out in the comments. <laughs> it's cool. You could do that. Do do, your, do whatever you need to do. Listen, I just hope the French speaking massive doesn't come from me. I'm like my people speak Spanish. We roll our R's. We don't do the ch. So just be kind. All right. <laughs> just be kind. <laughs> I am so excited to, to chat with you and to just just kind of pull back and see what this journey has been like for you and how you have welcomed, embraced more ease in your life. Let's get started with what does ease mean to you? Ooh, great question. Um, ease means that I am flowing and not forcing. So mm. it's really just... I'm allowing whatever is happening to happen and focusing on what I can control, focusing on myself and just moving what I can move forward, forward. And in those moments where you cannot move anything forward, allowing myself to rest and know mm -hmm. that once it starts moving again, we'll, you know, just keep moving in that direction. Flowing, not forcing. It is literally just started like the conversation just began and she's already here dropping the gems for y'all like i don't even know what to do with you right now just go ahead and per -per 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 in the comments because it's going down so what was your ship with east like before you became a part of the self trust society i did not know her <laughs> like, <laughs> well mariah carey um you know i tell people like i'm a leo I am Afro Latina. That's a lot of fire. So I love to just like force something. Like I love to hunt. I love to chase something down. I will like just go for it, go for it, go for it. 
And yeah, like I was trying to make Fetch happen, which I didn't realize. Like I thought I love mean girls. I thought I knew, <laughs> but I didn't. Um, so that's been the big thing. I was like, oh, Eve's. Oh, oh, huh. <laughs> Who knew it could be like this, right? Like, yeah. And I think, you know, for Black people, especially Black women, like, we're so used to, we're always told you have to work twice as hard. You know, like my mother every day would be like, I have three strikes against me in this country. I'm Black, I'm a woman, and I'm an immigrant. And like, that's what I grew up with. Your mom's always. <laughs> she literally sounds like that, though. That's the other funny thing. She's very proper, uh, very ladylike. But yeah, like she always ingrained that into me. So I thought, and me and my father, but dad started working when he was 12 years old. So, mm -hmm. you know, I always thought like you just had to like really, really bust your ass to mm -hmm. be a success. And what I've realized through ease is that when you're in alignment with what your purpose is, everything will flow. You don't mm -hmm. have to like add a bunch of stuff. So what I now think about, particularly well, with my life, not just my career, because I'm like, what kind of experiences do I want to have? Like, what are the things that are lighting me up? What do I think, you know, I want to do and move in? And I just set myself up for success. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, hey, I'm going to work on my French because it's important for me, you know, to speak Spanish and French. Mm -hmm. um, and I really want to learn all the major languages of this hemisphere in particular because I want to do diaspora work. Like I want to make deep connections. I want to reach out to people in West Africa where I've not done as much work. So if I want to do that, I got to, you got to get ready, you know, stay ready. So you don't got to get ready. Right. Like, so that's like what I do is just building that in to my own development and learning. And I know I love to learn. Like I'm a person I get bored. I like doing multiple things. So instead of what I try to do is not to do things that are draining, like I could fill that up with more work, mm -hmm. but why don't I like fill things up with stuff that I'm interested in, I'm passionate about, mm -hmm. and that are going to keep me like engaged and feeling refreshed as opposed to like adding on another client or taking on another job. And then I'm just like, mm -hmm. you know, tired and <laughs> burned out. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just, I'm curious, how many languages is that? Uh, so technically, technically, what I really want to do, I want to speak Spanish, French, uh, Portuguese, Arabic, and Swahili. Okay, so five. Cool. Cool. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, I would like to speak Arabic because I have an Arabic name. Um, shout out to my uncle who named me. My tío Cecilio became my uncle Abdul Malik. So <laughs> he helped me out there. But, um, but, you know, I mean, for me, it's more about like, I want to speak the major languages of the diaspora. So I'm like, if there are Black people speaking these languages, like Swahili is really important. Arabic is important. Mm -hmm. You know, Brazil is humongous. And then you also get like Angola and, you know, mm -hmm. Cabo Verde and, you know, other places, Mozambique, um, mm -hmm. if you speak Portuguese. So yeah, I'm just, I just want to talk to my people, literally. <laughs> and I want to have like as few barriers as possible to have those conversations and to like facilitate that. So that is so dope. I actually didn't even know that they spoke Portuguese in Cape Verde. Yeah, Cape Verde. yeah they right? like until I met someone and they were talking to me in Spanish and I was like, what is happening? Yep. And she told me, I was like, oh, wow, I had no idea. I'm like, yo, know, girl, geography wasn't my thing, but you know, I love this for the people in the culture. And I think it's so dope that you are positioning yourself to be in alignment, fully in alignment with the version of you you desire to embody at all times. And I wanted to talk a little bit about how did you make that decision? You know, you don't know, you say you don't know what who is was, who she was, and now you seem to be very in tune and connected with she, she who is ease. Yeah. How did you know you needed it? You wanted it? And what made you come over here? <laughs> I mean, I was honestly like, you've been my like ease Sherpa, so my guide through this process. Because I honestly, I didn't really know it was possible. Like, you know, I knew that there was, you know, kind of like a hand over my life where there were things that would just happen. Because if you, you look at my career, it did not make any sense when I was doing it. It was like, why would you do all of these different things. But now it's like, oh yeah, like it was really important for you to 
go to Guatemala and be an accompanier for indigenous indigenous witnesses of the genocide case. And then like, you know, become a program director for computer literacy programs. Like all of it came together because I do digital communications campaigns for human rights. Hello. So it was all that experience. Um, and then I always knew that when I didn't force something, it actually ended up being better, like in the back of my head. But it really clicked for me last year. I mean, it really took like my father passing away. My mother has dementia. So I became a caregiver overnight and I was exhausted. Like I did not, I did not have it. And I was fortunate enough that I had started consulting and the consulting was flowing. Like I actually don't really market my services. People find me. You market in here. Y'all gonna find out from here. Book her, give her your money. <laughs> yeah like I you know as I say that it's hard to say like as a person a communications person because I do marketing for other people like and I love marketers and I have so much whatever but it's just been such a blessing and you know the universe uh knows that that's what I need right now so I just you know I'm fortunate to be able to work with them um, actually I work with a lot of people I used to work with like when I was coming through the trenches <laughs> You know, a lot of those folks were like, oh, you're a free agent. Boom. Let's, you know, let's build, let's work together. So it's, it's felt like a family reunion in a lot of different ways. Um, so it's been really wonderful to have that and just to be able to do a lot of different things that are really pressing right now because the world is a mess. Um, but it, that was my first feeling of alignment of being like, oh, I started randomly, like took this leap, left my job you know, right before COVID started. Yeah. I was supposed to go to South Africa for two months at work and then the borders got closed. And I was just like laying on my couch. It didn't work for like six weeks. And was like, I just want to be of service. That's the one thing that I kept saying over and over again. Cause I kept looking at what was going on and I was like, you know, I was, I was okay. I had a severance, you know, they like my job got messed up because of COVID. So I was able to get like unemployment, which was really helpful. So financially, I was good. And having that financial cushion took away my anxiety because like mm -hmm. so much of what was driving me and was driving like the force was like, I got to make money. I got to do this. I got to da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. But then when that was kind of removed from the equation and I wasn't, we were on quarantine. I wasn't going anywhere. <laughs> I had nowhere to go. <laughs> I was literally bored in the house, bored in the house, bored, <laughs> like, so it was me and Netflix and I was just like, all right, well, I just want to be of service. And once I put that energy out there, then one of my colleagues was like, hey, I know two people who are looking for clients uh, or, you know, two people who are potential clients looking for a consultant. And I got both of those gigs. And after that, it just was like, boom, I thought I was going to go back to work and you know, get a job, like the, you know, traditional, like you need to get your benefits and you need to da 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 mm -hmm. uh, So I was just going to go and do the South Africa thing for a bit because it was a real like passion project and I was ready to do something different with my career. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I went from that to like four months later, I was doing a project with Facebook Africa, mm. you know? So it was, yeah, like with folks that I had met like seven years before when I was you know like coming out of school um so it was you know but it was definitely like the exhaustion and the having to you know figure out life and this so, so I was like oh my career is going really well but now I got all this life stuff going on so I was like how do I actually embody ease in a more intentional way because I knew I was fighting against myself um in many different ways and I've had to learn how to just chill and you know life will always put things in perspective for you so that's what happened and I mean it was still I still get my wig snatched occasionally uh it's fine <laughs> you should humble <laughs> it's like I'll allow it <laughs> yeah we'll have like a moment I'm like oh oh that's why that's not going well I'm forcing something <laughs> Let me just, let me just chill, let me just, you know, calm That down. is so dope. And I'm glad you, you go through, you, you share like the journey, right? Like it's not, and you know, we talked about this before we hopped on live, but 
you don't have to be quote unquote struggling the traditional sense of struggling to feel supported and to desire support and more importantly to be deserving of that support right and as your life was changing drastically with the transitioning of your dad and covid and you going basically into business for yourself and being like hey i'm a whole ceo and things are just flourishing for me and without being forced to be in that knowing that support is something that you needed and desired and be willing to go after it that can be challenging for a lot of people what made that easier for you because you ain't a lot of people no i'm just one i wish i could clone myself i definitely have said in the past like it's like if i could just hire a me that would be great um but I, you know it really was i wanted that support i really want to vocalize that because i had a lot of success very quickly and it came the like do i deserve this how is this happening why is this happening because i it was again that alignment because everything was being moved online and people were scrambling for people who knew how to do social justice work online. That's all I've done my mm-hmm. whole career. So it just happened to be like, oh shit, Jamila's available. Oh my God. And then I got like a you know deluge of interest as a result of that. Um, but it you, yeah, it, it feels like you didn't earn it. Mm-hmm. Like that was one of the things that I had to really deal with and reconcile was just the first, like, I deserve this. Okay. Um, that was the first step of just that acknowledgement of like, I'm supposed to be here. I'm supposed to do this. You know, I can do this work. And then recognizing that I needed support in order to do it, which is why I was like, I got to get a coach. I had to figure this out. Um, cause really what I was doing, and I think really what the majority of our work together was me doing was like grieving the old me, Yes. you know, not just grieving my dad and, you know, the life that I had. Uh, before but literally like grieving the old me who thought like oh no I have to work a couple more years I have to get these languages under my belt before I go off on my own I have to you know I have to I have to I have to and I was thrown into it when I didn't feel ready but I very was clearly (laughs) very ready and I had had about a year of success you know by the time we started working together and I was ready to refine Yes. and move into a new phase of okay what do I you know need to do and I thought like oh I need to get my files organized and I need to do this and that and it wasn't that was not the work so I need to organize my google drive <laughs> yeah I was like that was, I was it's funny now to think of, like that was not the work that needed to be done I still need to do that work let's be clear you know that's the next the next phase um it's like getting more admin help to get me organized right I can pay somebody to do that huh um who but, knew who knew? yeah but that, that's part of it too is like the learning how to let go that's been my more recent journey is like learning how to let pieces go allowing the team to do what the team does and now I'm actually seeing that the work that I did to allow myself <laughs> to be supported and to have a team is actually coming you know, it's coming about, like, I just had COVID. Everybody in New York is getting COVID, ridiculous. Um, But I was like, oh, like, I got to tell these people I work with that I'm sick and I can't do stuff. Um, And pieces of the work still moved. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. (laughs) Shocker. (laughs) Shocker. It's just like when you, because, you know, when you work solo, it's really just you. And I was, you know, just kind of used to tinkering on my own. And occasionally I would collab, you know, with like subcontractors or other people and it was, you know, whatever. But um, I have, I've had a team to like move pieces of the projects that I'm working on forward. And I'm doing some pretty big projects right now, like um, filming a podcast pilot. I'm like doing a documentary for a client. And I, I've never directed anything in my life, but well, you know, whatever, here we go. It's, um, the, flex. So. it's, it's the subtle flex for me. <laughs> like I live for all of this. And, and I'm so glad that you're, that you're acknowledging it. Cause I just remember a lot of what we did in the beginning was literally just reminding you that you now nobody struggle bus. Like you don't gotta be surviving. You're not surviving anything. 
you are flowing in life like you are if if moving with ease was a post if, if moving in alignment was a poster your picture will be on it like because the way things are unfolding for you and you're like and this is coming up and this is coming up and I didn't even do nothing for this why is this happening to me girl because you is aligned you are doing the thing and I want you to talk a little bit about what it was like to grieve yourself because a lot of us don't realize that I hope this there's a season for grieving the version of you that's dying to create space for the version of you that's being reborn the version of you like rising like a phoenix what was it like for you to rise like a phoenix to grieve all jamila and make room for new i'm like have i have i risen yet is the question um it feels like i've not risen yet i mean because i i had a revelation i really thought last year was the hardest year of my life and mm. i really thought i was like oh yeah you know q1 i'm gonna rest i'm gonna take care of myself i'm gonna bounce back i'm gonna bounce back hard mm. no and i came back I went to Costa Rica. I was like, oh, I'm going to, you know, vibe by the beach of black sand. It's going to be great. Came back and was like, yeah, so 2022 is not a bad bitch year. Let's <laughs> be clear. It's not. It's like just sending out the PSA to everybody. Memo. Widespread. Not a bad bitch year. Um, but it's a year of recovery. Yeah. So I think it's like a year of integration. So I became certified in yoga. Because, uh, yeah, metaphysical mommy. There's another yes. like, manifestation that's coming to fruition of just like, you know, how do we care for e ourselves? How do we care for each other is really important to me. And I think it's important for folks who work in social justice, you know, and human rights work to figure out those practices. So I'm working on healing myself and educating myself and hoping that at some point I'll be able to offer that mm -hmm. out to folks. Um but yeah, so, you know, I, like in yoga, they talk about integration. So it's like, literally when you just like, after you've done a really hard pose, mm -hmm. you just kind of stand there for a little bit or you lay there. So mm -hmm. if you've ever taken yoga, if you notice like there's a pause sometimes, mm -hmm. that's integration. So it's like your body is adjusting to what you just did. It's like, oh, you just did all this work, girl. Take a minute, hold on, mm -hmm. take a mm -hmm. breath, right? So that's what it feels like for me right now is like, I'm in a moment of integration. because I did a lot of grieving last year, mm -hmm. like a lot of grieving. And the, what they don't tell you is like, there's a big depression stage in the five stages of grief. So mm -hmm. I'm like full acceptance mode now, but I hit a very deep depression stage. And, you know, now I'm in the integration, the acceptance of like, my life is good for, you know, as challenging as it is to be a caregiver. I know so many people out there are caregivers in many different ways. Like having a parent who has like dementia is mm -hmm. exceedingly challenging, um, but I do it with a great deal of ease. Mm -hmm. And it's just because like, I've had to learn how to not be a control freak, you know? Um, but that's, you know, like, I mean, I still feel like I'm rising. It's pretty, I mean, it's great. Like, I'm, I'm so grateful. I recognize that, you know, it's like, it's popping over here. It is. But I also know, like, I know my capacity. <laughs> and I know, like, how great I can be and how great it can get. So I'm recognizing and being gentle with myself. Because I think before I would have beat myself up to be like, well, you know, you're not in the physical shape that you want to be in, or, you know, you don't have the relationship mm -hmm. that you want to have or whatever. And instead of focusing on those negatives, I just pour into gratitude. And again, just like really focus on like what I want to build. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so much of my life has shifted to what kinds of experiences I want to have. That's really where I am when I, I'm not worried about money. I'm not worried about what client is going to come. I'm not worried about whatever I'm building my life around what kind of experiences do I want to have? What kind of experiences do I want to create for my mother, you know, to support her? Like, what does it look like to be a friend, family member, you know, friend, like all of that, right? Like I'm always a part of comrade, like mm -hmm. all of that. And I, you know, I'm starting to shape that for my clients too. It's like, well, mm. what, like, I remember one of the questions you asked me, I never thought about this before. It's like, what do you want your clients to feel when they work with you? And I was like, oh, 
okay, wait, hold on, what? <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. I wasn't ready for that question. Um, but it's definitely something that I think about a lot now is like, what kind of experience do I want them to have with me? And that requires me to have a degree of discipline. That's been the hardest mm. thing for me to let go of and grieve is procrastinating, Jamila. Mm. Uh, <laughs> we're still working on it. Some of y'all just felt so seen. I know it. Yeah. Drop a comment because I know you just felt seen. Yeah, it's rough. I mean, like, I don't, you know, I don't like routine. We've talked about this ad nauseum. Um, I don't like to feel rushed to do things, you know, but it's like, I don't like to feel rushed to do things, but I also don't like to procrastinate. Like, like I'm a rebel. I'm like, don't tell me what to do. It's probably why I work in social justice. Um, but what I realized is that you just end up fighting yourself. Basically. And yeah, that was when the light bulb went off. When I realized I was like, I'm just like, there's nobody to fight. Cause it was like, you know, color purple, like all my life I had to fight. And I think especially like if you're a black woman, you know, or, you know, non-binary, gender non-conforming. Um, yeah, like if you are from any historically oppressed group, like you are used to fighting. And like, on top of that, I work in social justice. All I do is like, it's like a fight against these opposing forces. Um, but when you get to a point of ease, when you get to a point of alignment, mm -hmm. there's no one to fight. Mm. everything is working everything is flowing you had to fight people mm -hmm. and I realized I was using like brute force mm -hmm. when I didn't have to mm -hmm. and so my approach has had to change I've had to soften I've had to be okay with being vulnerable and being authentic like I would have worked through COVID before literally I, I would have been like you know, and I still did more than I actually should have, <laughs> to be quite <laughs> Progress, baby steps. Like, baby steps. I would work in progress. That's why I said, I'm like, I don't know about the full Phoenix, but, you know, it's giving Jean Grey. It's not quite giving, or if you're like a Marvel fan, you know, there's an X-Men fan, like Jean Grey turns into the Phoenix. So I'm like, it's giving Jean Grey. We're not quite there yet. I mean, um, even, a, even a baby Phoenix is still a Phoenix. Yeah, right. It's just like, you know, like a little bit. It's a baby phoenix, but it's still a phoenix. People still yeah, know it's still a bird. Let's say that. I definitely <laughs> a still, a still a bird. Um, we're in the avian family. Okay. <laughs> you got wings. <laughs> the wings are coming up. Right. Got wings. I might be a peacock. I can't fly. But I'm a look fly on the ground. Listen, <laughs> you know. it's coming. It's coming. And, and I'm so grateful that you talked about this because oftentimes when we are looking to take our careers to the next level, we are really looking at the external as a way to expedite, to, to be a catalyst for us. When in reality, if you decide to do this with ease, if you are out here, you want to be struggling and suffering your whole life, this end for you, feel free to exit left. But if you are here to do things with ease, if you are to be flowing, not forcing, if you are to be embodying and embracing, not controlling, then it's going to require you to go inside. And there is a discomfort associated with that, right? Because many of us, especially if you come from a back, if you're an immigrant, for sure, I have yet to meet an immigrant person that'd be like, oh, no, I come from a household that was very much ease and it was very much, you know, flow, not force. Like, I've, if that's you watching this, DM me, comment below. Like, I need to meet you because I have yet to meet an immigrant that has raised, that was raised like that. Um, and I feel like we are the first generation that we're going to be like the first millionaires in our families. And that's going to require us to show up with an emotionally healthier space because we didn't grow up in a space that had the bandwidth to culture that right and to nurture those type of beliefs so i'm curious for you how being part of this community supported you through that process like how did it help you do the grieving do the releasing create be how did it help you be more real with yourself about how you were showing up yeah, I think, you know, I didn't, I don't usually like group activity. <laughs> like, I mean, I'm a people person, I'm an extrovert, but when it comes to like, I got to do some woo-woo shit in a group like that, I'm new to that because I didn't, I, as much as I'm like a metaphysical mommy now, I didn't 
have feelings till I was like 23 years old. It was very like, you know, happy, sad, angry. <laughs> like that was that was the range of my emotions. And I think that's also kind of an immigrant thing. Like, you know, who has time for emotions? We hustling. Like you gotta, you know, get to the work, right? So <laughs> yeah, I was very kind of closed off in that way. But it was actually very healing to be able to be a part of a space where I knew that I could be held while I was being extremely vulnerable and like feel heard, feel seen. Um, I was going through this with people who were in similar positions, you know, to that I was. Um, and it helped me so much in terms of my own vulnerability and authenticity and realizing it is a power because you, when people connect with you, that's really where they connect from. And truthfully, it's made me a better storyteller. Like, you know, I love, I look, love to laugh obviously and I but I use humor as a defense mechanism you know so it was really easy for me to like you know be on my Netflix as a joke stand-up special all the time but I couldn't talk about what was really going on with me and it's um actually I'll just shout out real quick the Rothaniel special but Garrett, girl yes <laughs> yes and I, this is not sponsored by them but feel free to just got to check if you're yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it it touched me so deeply because it was hilarious like it was really fun but it was so vulnerable and so raw and so painful um and the fact that he's just like allowed himself to continue to be in that space like every interview everything he's doing he's talking about you know the relation or for those who don't know this is a black male comedian who came out as gay. Um, I think he's like 34 years old and he has like a super religious family. And the special is about that. And it was so interesting to like actually kind of have that where he was just like fully himself in the context of comedy. Um, and I, for me, I think it's resonant because I think I come across a very happy person. I'm very upbeat, I'm very high energy. Like anybody who knows me knows I'm like, boop, 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 you know? So when I'm sad and <laughs> depressed and I struggle really hard, like when I hit that depression stage of grief, it completely took me by surprise. I was shocked. Like I was like, I had already taken time to grieve. I had already done all this stuff. Like, where is this coming from? Mm -hmm. um, but you have to learn how to just like be with yourself in every phase of who you are. And you're always going to be changing and growing. So this space like really helped me actually be able to deal with when I wasn't in the space for me to be like oh I'm going through this really hard thing okay here's like how I support myself here's how I allow myself to grieve here's how I have community um so you know there's just like foundation of like building blocks and tools that you can continue to use regardless of you know wherever you are in the process that I think has been really helpful for me but um yeah like just the being able to just show up as you and people being like, I still fuck with you. Like, like my clients, man, like that was my friend, you know, my friends actually, cause I don't talk about work anymore. I used to always complain about my job. That was like, you know, my big thing. I was always like, oh my gosh, like work and blah, 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 blah. And now I don't talk about my work. <laughs> like my friends are like, so you haven't talked about what you're working on. Like what's, what's going on with work? And my friend asked me and I was just like, yo man, like my clients really fuck with me. Just like, do you want to expound upon it? I was like, I, you know, I, you know, pitch these ideas, I do these things, and they're just like, okay, cool. And before it was always a fight. Like I was so used again, like I'm still getting used to the like, I'm thinking I gotta show up, you know, like, oh, hold up. I got ready to go. I don't, not at all. It's it's just a conversation. It's like, oh, well, I think this would be the best strategy. Here's why I think it would be the best strategy. Like, mm -hmm. here's the evidence, da da da. And it's always just like a, that's great. Let's add it to do this. Like, oh, we have to take these considerations in, blah, blah, blah. Like, it's just been so overwhelmingly positive. Um, yeah. So I'm like, all right, well, again, let's just flow with it, right? And it doesn't mean there's not, you know, challenges. Like, things happen. There's stuff with my mom I just had to deal with where I was like, oh, boy, but because my perspective has changed where I would have come in like ready to yell at people and like get upset. Instead, I was just like, hey, I'm confused. I got this thing. 
you know, and then it was just right. Like just picking up the phone as opposed to like firing mm-hmm. off an email. It's just like those small changes mm-hmm. um, of just like, you have to talk with, I mean, I'm a communications person. You should know this, but when you're used to like, you know, it's like when you're used to people kind of dumping on you, it really is a shift where you have to be like, oh, let me actually talk with you and let's figure this out together. But I think when you're living in ease, you, instead of assuming it's going to be a fight and assuming there's going to be a struggle, you assume that there's a solution because you're like, oh, where's my fan? (laughs) Here it is. All right. Yeah, I think like that's where I am right now, where I'm just like, you know, I just assume that there's a solution to something. Um, And I try to build that ease all through my life. I'm like, how can I automate this? How can I, you know, do that? And sometimes there's a challenge in getting to that place. But like, I'm experiencing that with like some of my mom's stuff. But it's also like, this is not the worst thing in the world. Instead of like the insurance company directly paying for whatever, like I got to pay for it. And then I get an insurance check, you know, I get a reimbursement check. It's still getting done. It's still getting done. It's still getting done. And I get some sky miles in, you know, the process. So, hey, great. So we're up to be the plane. <laughs> always, I'm always on a plane. Y'all know Jamila like I know Jamila loves to be the plane. I'm always on a plane. Oh. Yeah. Well, my body is starting to be like, so about these planes. Right, right. You know, hearing you reflect on your journey I could like literally cry because I just remember where you were when when we started working together and you were feeling like I should be better at this by now why am I still challenged and struggling to to be at ease with some of these things and I'm like sis you became a caregiver yesterday like it literally just happened and you already feel like why am i not an expert and this is the thing about being a leader this is the thing about being a powerhouse this is the thing about being a trailblazer you are used to get it shit done quickly and things happening quickly around you and we forget that that's not how the work world works that may be how your career works that may be how you know things are and thing works but something else is at play in it requires that you trust that timing. It requires that you trust the flow, that you trust the ease. What was the most difficult part for you around releasing control? Because I know that was something that I know we're still working on, but I know that was something that was <laughs> present for you very intense. <laughs> yes, yeah, this is going to be a lifelong journey, y'all. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's just like you have to trust that even if it's not how you would have done it, Mm. it still got done and it still was done well. There's many different ways to do things. Um, And that's it. Like, I think I've become more open to, and I actually, like when we're in a collab, I mean, I'm a creative person. So when we're in a collaborative space, like I am open to ideas and all of that. But I think when it comes to stuff that I was used to doing, Mm -hmm. like I'm used to doing stuff for me, in a specific way and then like we're deviating from how I would have done this thing that I'm always used to doing and I'm like whoa whoa, 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 hold on hold on what's going on like I said I use this specific detergent you know you know it's just like little stuff like that so that I had to be like I still got done like right is it clean did you have a large reaction to the detergent? Like what's, you know, like, is it really that big of a deal? Okay, girl, no, let's move on. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I mean, now it's just kind of like, and it's just really about like where I want to put my energy. Mm. And I was like, do I want to, you know, cause I had a lot of stuff. I mean, Nori knows the tea. I went through a lot of stuff last year. And it was like a lot of really deep, like fundamental changes in some of my most core foundational relationships mm-hmm. I had had in my life. Like it was like, everything just was like, whoop. Mm-hmm. you know, just throw it all up in the air. Mm-hmm. Like literally the roots of the tree were <laughs> ripped out of the soil. Um, but I had to like, I had to realize what part I was taking in my own suffering by being in that place, you know, and make a choice. I was like, do I, 
want to stay stuck in this place and continue to be sad and depressed about it? Or do I want to put my energy into something that's actually going to serve me? Mm-hmm. And that is, you know, the real shift that I'm in right now. And it's showing up for me in terms of my own care, you know? So like learning how to maybe not be on a plane all the time. <laughs> and, uh, my mother lives in a different state. So it's like, you know, caregiving from a distance, the whole other thing Mm -hmm. and if you have ever met a black caribbean latin american woman one thing you're not going to do is take her out of her home you can try you could you could try so you know um but yeah like just understanding you know like you have to live your life for yourself that's the biggest blessing that my parents you know in this whole transition have given me is that um Like it's not gonna, there's, I'm sure there's a lot of people that have a lot of opinions about how I do this or whatever. It doesn't matter. It's like, does it work for me? Does it work for my mom? Mm -hmm. And you know, what matters to me is that I was a year ago, it was a mess. I had no idea what was going to happen. And a month ago, I was able to take her back home to Panama, flew Mm -hmm. her first class, you know, Mm -hmm. to like see her family. And we stayed in a hotel and it was a really nice hotel, a washer dryer, a full kitchen. So it was like a little apartment, mm-hmm. you know, that we had. And it was great. I mean, mind you, I asked her, I'm like, I'm feeling all proud. I'm like, immigrant daughter brings her mother back to the motherland, flies her first class on yeah. Delta, no less, right? Like, you yeah. know, classy airline. So I'm like, mom, how'd she love first class? And she goes, eh, not much difference. I was like, the universe is always going to find a way to humble us. Humble you. It was like, doo, 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 doo. <laughs> like mind you, none of that matters. Like none that's you doing that for you. And, and I'm so grateful that you are bringing light to this because especially those of us that are immigrants and, or are still working through receiving approval or validation of our parents. Like we do these things for them because really we do it for ourselves like we want that pat in the back we want to be like i brought you back and i flew you first class and i had this and i had that it's it's really for us right and yeah. and it can be hard to like swallow that and to just know like okay girl i might if you don't like it but we still are doing this because this is the energy that i'm on and i'm available to this energy yeah i mean that's like been the and i think for me it's been the one of the most important lessons for me um like just checking my own ego and like what is like what am I doing that's actually trying to fill myself up or Mm -hmm. seeking validation because my mom no longer has that filter I mean Caribbean parents really don't have it to be clear um but now it's really like like she does not know the difference legitimately you know like it's not going to make a big deal to her whether she goes to Panama or not she's just kind of like she's just vibing so like the I guess the version of dementia she has, she's so chill. Like she's just like, okay. No like she goes there, she's like, sure, no problem. Like she just goes with the flow. And I'm learning from her in so many different ways where I'm like, oh, you know, you just gotta. And you know, like sometimes like something really challenging or hard will happen. And I'll have like a bad day or like I'll get frustrated with her, like have an argument or whatever. And then end of the day, she doesn't remember it happened. So I'm still holding on to this anger. And I'm like, ah, and she's like, what? What's what's I'm bothered. Yeah, completely. So it's actually like teaching me that I'm like, does it really matter? Mm. It's okay. Like I can feel the emotion in the moment. You know, it's like we had that moment. It was a tough moment. We got through it. And she completely let it go. Yeah. Complete, like she's completely let it go. And I'm like, well, how do I do that? Mm-hmm. like how do I just like have that moment feel what I feel acknowledge my feelings and then release release it and you've got to do it I mean especially just in life but um you know I think in particular mm-hmm. like you tend to work with a lot of women and mm-hmm. all of that and a lot of folks have families and they have other responsibilities and you can't carry all of those burdens <laughs> into every <laughs> situation you gotta gotta learn how to just let it go so you know like you don't want to bring your client stress to your kid right like you have a newborn baby sage okay the name says it all sage ain't here for that he's not like <laughs> peace he's literally not <laughs> exactly like your kid doesn't care 
So definition of unsubscribe, truly. Basically, right. So it's like I'm learning, you know, like I said, it's a humbling experience. It's totally not how I thought I was going to learn about these things at all. Um, but I'm allowing myself to learn and just like to be like, oh, well, actually, maybe it isn't that big of a deal. Like maybe I'm tripping a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Or I'm like, oh, you know, am I doing this for her? Or am I, you know, like I'm like, why am I trying to seek validation? in this moment it doesn't need to be any sort of like I don't need somebody to be like oh you're like the best and da 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 but it helped me out when she said that because for the rest of the trip we're like oh we're so happy you know like you brought her and like da 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 and I was just like yeah like I was able to receive it but I wasn't like you know gassing myself I was Mm -hmm. like this is what you do this is what I do this is important it was important to for her to come home and see the family we hadn't seen anybody since before COVID, they couldn't come to the funeral, mm-hmm. you know, because of COVID. So it it was like, it was a momentous moment and it meant a lot, but it's also like, let the moment, the moment mm-hmm. itself is already, it's already important. Like it doesn't, I don't have to be <laughs> in the mm-hmm. center. You don't have to manufacture something to make it more, yeah, more it, Right, exactly. Yeah. And I think that's like, for me, where the melodrama comes mm-hmm. in, like, I, th- I still was melodramatic because I told my friend, I was like, I didn't make a big deal about having COVID. Please clap. Let's let's give it up. <laughs> someone someone acknowledged that I had COVID. Please thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Listen, you know, I just, you know, was like easy about it. I didn't like draw attention to myself. Look at that. I'm growing, y'all. Look, 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 look. <laughs> Listen, and that too is part of the process. Like part of it is, you seeing it yourself, right? Because it's it's very as a coach, like I look at y'all, I see your transformations. Mm-hmm. It is my gift to point these things out to you. Like that's the reason why y'all come over here is because I'm gonna keep it a hundred with you. And sometimes your edges will get snatched. It's not me, it's universe. I'm just a vessel. It is what it is. Um, but you need that. You you it's so important that you have that in your life because oftentimes. We don't have someone mirroring that shift for us, right? We don't have someone that's showing us, hey, what if you looked at it from this perspective, right? And when we do have that, we may not be as open to it. And having had gone through our time working together, being part of the Sculptor Society, and then having your mom as like, your assignment, like I don't want to call her your assignment, but like being an opportunity for you to exercise on all these things yeah. and work on all these things, it puts things on a whole completely different playing field for you. And I'm going to ask you a question. And while you think about this, I'm going to share some things with, with those of you that are watching. I want you to, to, to think about how has having someone to mirror these things for you helped you with your shift helped you be available to maybe that's not that a big deal maybe i was stripping a little bit maybe this is not as important as i thought it was how has our work together supported you through that piece and when you think about that i know you're watching because obviously energy you know the vibes and you may be listening to jamila and you're you're feeling connected by what she's saying maybe you too are looking for your parents to give you a stamp of approval and a gold star. Girl, you're not the only one. We all are in some shape or form. I want you to book a call with me and I want you to have a conversation about what's going on because the truth is having a mirror is important. And too many of y'all think y'all struggling and you're not. And you don't know that because you're just around people that are struggling all the time. And you don't gotta be that way. So you can own your power. You can own that you're not struggling. You can own that you are thriving in your life. You can own that things are going great for you over here. And that doesn't make you less than. And I can support you in doing that. And I want to invite you to book a call with me and let's talk about it so that you can, you too can be like, maybe then that's serious. Because this, it ain't. But you don't know that yet. But you can know that. All right. Jamila, talk to us. How has being part of the community supported you in allowing yourself to receive, allowing yourself to release and to embrace the ease? I I mean, it's exactly a lot of what I've struggled with and I think is like a constant struggle for folks who work 
in, you know, like human rights, social justice stuff is that we're also told that like, you shouldn't really have success, you know, like money. And it's true. It's like the, our relationship with money and all of that. And, you know, by I'm, I, I call myself a famous luxury socialist. It's a joke, but you know, kind of true to be quite honest. Really true though. <laughs> it's like probably gonna be true at some point in my life. Um, but no, it's just really like, you know, you deserve to live the life that you want. That's really what it is at the end of the day. So whatever it is, however that manifests for you. Um, and that was like part of what was really good for me with being a part of the community was just that like, oh, like I deserve these things. It's awesome that I've reached this much success. Like, I don't even think I was thinking I was successful. I was like, yeah, you know, these things just kind of happen and like, na, 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 na. And, you know, to have people, especially like, you know, Tiffany, um, shout out to She Plays, right? Um, but she was like, I've had multiple businesses, like your success has come really quickly. And I was like, girl, what you talking about? What? I was like, what are you talking about? What? <laughs> Not clicking. Um, but it, it's great to like actually have people be like, wow, no, that's actually dope. Cause I would come in and be like, hey, you know, I'm doing this thing, da da da. People were like, wait, no, that's amazing. Why are you talking about it so casually? And, you know, it's nice to have that, but it's also good too to have folks hold you accountable in those moments and have people to be there to like snatch your edges. I really value that. Like I'm a person who very much so values authenticity. I don't want you to lie to me you know, and like, I love that the space that we've created is a space for honesty to be like, have you thought about this in a different way? Or, you know, maybe like approaching it in X, Y, Z. So it's a lot of like hype woman, you know, and all of that. But I think there's also a real space to be like, I don't know, sis, this, mm. are you actually living, you know, the way that you said you wanted to? Right. Because I got a lot of that because it was like, aren't you supposed to be resting? Why are you doing all this work? Because <laughs> I took a month off in like three days in. I was like, I'm going to die. I don't know how to do this. Um, and it was literally like folks in the group, they were like, Jamila, could you just sit down? That sounds like what you're trying to do is work. Is it work? And I was like, oh, yeah, you're right. OK, you're right. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's just having that level of accountability partners and folks who can remember what you said and give it back to you, especially in those moments when you need it. Like a, a lot of what would happen to me is they'd be like, well, I remember when you said this, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I said that. <laughs> One thing about the social societies, they gonna remember what you said. <laughs> yeah, it was like, what, what I said, what did I say? Oh, you right, I did say, it. Oh, okay. Well. So it's, yeah, like, I know I need those checks because I'm a ridiculous human being. Um, I love that about me. Yeah, I'm ridiculous. So, you know, it's good for people to just every once in a while be like, girl, just, just sit down. Just sit down. Yeah. Just be still. Just All down. right. Yeah, be still. Thank you for being so transparent and honest because I feel like a lot of us always particularly like those of us that are immigrants, we always saw our family doing something. Like, I almost feel like I remember hearing my aunts be like, why are you sitting down? Why yes. are you not finding something to do? Yeah, so no, the I, idea. I, I thought I was lazy until like seven years ago, literally. Like I had, I remember I had, um, I actually had a coach prior to Nori, I know, but had a, a coach and she's, she's dope like dope woman white woman right so you know different background or whatever so she didn't have the same kind of experience like nori and i was like afro latina like you know immigrant woo, right like immediately i was like i'm working with this girl um but this is like an older white woman and i remember telling her that i was like yeah like i really thought i was lazy and she burst out laughing she was like what like it was the funniest thing she'd ever she's like you legitimately thought you were lazy I was like my parents told me I was lazy my whole life like mm -hmm. what else was I gonna think girl like yes I thought I was lazy till I was about 30 years old because, like, it's, it's a very real thing and sometimes sometimes I'm still 
remembering that I'm not like Ooh. now that I'm at I'm at a level where it's like I desire to work a max of four hours a day five days a week maybe and I'd be like girl four hours when you want to do what you gotta do like what you doing and it's like I'm doing whatever I want and what I desire is to be working I desire to live and work on the side Yep. I decided to work and live on the side. No, like I decided to live. I am living and on the side, I do this thing. And because I'm the best in the world at it, it covers all my luxury living in yes. those four hours a day. I'll, I'll take it even a step further with the procrastination because I'm sure there are other people who do this too. My procrastination comes in the fact that I know that I can get it done easily and quickly so that I can do the other stuff. So I procrastinate to justify the fact that I have something to do. Your favorite phrase, it's not even a heavy lift. Yeah, like, yeah, it's not a heavy lift. Like, I just be saying yes to everything. Like, girl, why? Um, but then I procrastinate because I'm like, and I know I can knock it out. I know I can knock it out. But it, it gives me the illusion of busyness, mm -hmm. right? And that's what I'm learning. I have a lot of spaciousness. So I, I mean, I do a lot, like I have a lot going on, um, but I have a lot of spaciousness in my schedule. Like I'll have days where like, I won't have a call, mm -hmm. you know, like Fridays I block off. So I'm not talking to people. Um, mm -hmm. I might work if I want. It's like, that's my, did I do everything I was supposed to do catch up day? You know, mm -hmm. um, it's also my like, oh, did I take care of stuff in my life day? Mm -hmm. Like, is my mom good? that I do my stuff day. So I have a lot of spaciousness in my schedule and that took a lot of getting used to because I was a communications director and I know you were too. Mm -hmm. And communications director means you're on the phone all day. You are constantly in calls. So it's like you're calling, you know, media, you're pitching and you're with like, yeah, like you're meeting with many teams. So I was coming out of having like, you know, 12, 15 meetings a day to pivoting to where it's like, now I'm like, oh, Lord, I had four meetings today. Oh, my God. Wow. You gotta take a nap. I was uh, not doing that again. Let me block off my calendar. Like, you know, and it's 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 wild to actually like be in that space where I have that freedom yes. to be able to do it. And it's I'm so grateful for it. And I'm finally in the place where I'm embracing that gratitude. And I'm learning that I have to be more disciplined in terms of sticking to like I said I was going to work from this time to this time today let's get this done because mm -hmm. I want to go for a walk I want to go for a hike I want to like you know do something fun over the weekend I, I I'm absolutely not working this Friday so you know I think it's it's exactly what you said I think the U.S. um it's just like gosh this country I'm like really I asked my uncle I was like you really thought this was the better life huh okay uh, <laughs> I mean, and, and it, it is it was for them and it is for them in a way right and it is for us in a way because it gives access and i think that's the thing yeah, like a lot of opportunity yeah it's a lot of opportunity i think you know particularly too for millennials i think that the hustle culture is killing us and like we gotta you know i think there's a way and this is why i really have resonated with ease because there's a way to reach your goals there's a way to still be ambitious like you see, I'm over here talking about, I'm gonna speak five languages, you know, like it's, it's, I have plenty of ambition and I'll get there. I will like, um, I have plenty of ambition, you know, but it's just the way that I arrive at my goals is different. Like I'm not going up the mountain and trudging through, you know, two feet of snow and then walking barefoot through a desert, you know, to get there. In 200 degrees. <laughs> right. Like. I'm not doing that anymore. So, We're in a yacht. On with a yacht. cocktail in a pool yeah. and a yeah. private chef. Yes. On your way there. You may yeah. stop by and do something while you continue on your yacht. That's how that's the energy we on. Period. Yeah. Period. Right. Like it's like, you know, you deserve to have all the things that you want. Like whatever that is, whether it's a cottage or a yacht or a whatever. Um mm -hmm. Yeah, I just I know I'm a you know so I'm a mujer fina, so I'm like I like I like cute stuff, so I gotta. You, you gotta know, be cute. You gotta be cute. I'm, I'm still gonna do what I do. I'm gonna show up to the protest in a faux fur, 
Mm-hmm. I'm gonna come see y'all. I, yeah, you I look, look for the extra one in the crowd. That's me. Yeah, I literally remember <laughs> that happened to me. Like when I was like 20, we went to a protest. I had this like faux fur, and my boyfriend was like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> He's like, like, what, are you what are you talking about? It's vegan. <laughs> Let's go. I live, Jamila. I could literally talk to you for hours. You know this, especially because. We have so much overlap, both Afro-Latinas, both comms people, both just overall amazing at what we do in the world and committed to live in the most authentic, affluent, opulent, luxurious version of our lives and abundant version of our lives. So I can I can spend all day doing this, but you know, I got a baby, so I really can't. Um, one last question for you. What would you say to the woman that's watching that is considering joining Self Trust Mastery and is asking herself, is this really for me? How do I know this is for me um, so that they can show up powerfully and authentically and grieve themselves with joy? What would you tell her as she's asking herself these questions as someone that was in it? I think that if you're already asking yourself these questions that you already know, so it's typically if it's arrived in your life, like I know that because I had followed Nori for a while before um, and, you know, just saw like your work through Janelle Martinez, shout out to her, we love her, Um, but I'd seen your work through her and I was like, oh, she's cute, let me follow her, (laughs) right? And then it was just like, I wanted, I was like, I need a new coach. I need somebody to take me to the next level. Cause I had actually gotten to the level of the coach I had. That mm. So I was like, oh no, I need somebody to like break me through to the next phase. And then it was literally, you had a post like, oh, sit, like sign up for a call. And like, I'm doing this and blah. And I was like, oh, well, I'm interested. Okay. Um, so yeah, I think like if it's coming to your life, it is likely for a reason and you probably are ready and you don't know that you're ready yet, but you are. So, but also the point of the space is to grow. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you're not going to grow unless you put yourself in the situation and Mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's going to happen one way or the other. So like, might as well. Y'all got a choice. I'm tired of telling y'all. Y'all come into my energy and you think you're not going to be expanded. <laughs> you come into my energy and you think you're not about to be embracing ease. You come into my energy and you think you're not about to embrace abundance and opulence and luxury. I don't know why y'all play these ghetto games. You know the vibes. You're watching this. You're thinking, is it me? You, if you know, you know, there's a link, book it. You know, I'm not doing this. You know what to do. Jamila, thank you so much <laughs> thank you for joining me for this convo. And you know congratulations thank you because you've come a long way <laughs> Ooh, wow, seriously i mean it was it was yeah it was uh it was a moment it, it was, was there was moment. a moment that she was like i don't know y'all <laughs> but it here you a- are yeah. and it's yeah. been an honor really to to see you in the fullness of who you are doing it with ease handling all of this multi-dimensions of your human experience and doing it with kindness, with compassion, with grace, and still being your badass manifesting mommy that you are and, and owning all of those things and bringing all of that into everything that you do. It's one of the most beautiful things in the world to experience. And I am just so grateful to get to do that. I received that. So I'm happy to teach yoga at your retreats. <laughs> listen, listen, we might, <laughs> you don't got to tell me twice. I'm just saying, I can't be at the next one, unfortunately. So I wish all of you all, you're going to have an amazing time. I'm sad I won't be there. But the one after that, let me know. Listen, we're going to make that happen, especially because, well, y'all don't know, this is like a little insight. Jamila will be opening her own international location to support everyone that's doing social justice 
pour into themselves because we can't be pouring from a crack cup or empty cup y'all we gotta be you still gotta love yourself that too is an act of social defiance or whatever the terminology is Lori keeps trying to speed up the timeline on this you see this is what she does I just said it casually and she's like so we're opening international centers I was like whoa whoa let me let me finish <laughs> yoga instructing training first Lori I just you know I'm a catalyst <laughs> right like it's literally <laughs> my name you know I'm a catalyst it's what I do it's what uh, I do yeah. it's what I do yeah I was like I'm interested in doing some herbalism I'm doing yoga I'm doing Reiki and she was like so we're opening the centers um what I was like whoa <laughs> okay <laughs> but yeah it will soon come Come, it's come, exactly, it's coming soon. More info for you soon. I love that. See, we can agree to that. Thank you for joining us today. You. you know what to do. You know, you're gonna be in great company and you too can have a place where people can hold you and love on you and allow you to take off your emotional bra so that you can just be who you are with ease. So come hang out with us. Thank you for joining me today.